Hello guys and welcome to Watch Talk Wednesday, your source for watch industry news every single week. My name is Josh and I am with Perfect Timepiece. Now let's hop on into the news stories for the week. It's a bit of a slow news week. We only have four stories to cover with you guys today, but they are four interesting stories that uh, I'm pretty excited about. So let us hop right in. So our first story today comes from Worn and Wound, and if you look on my screen here, this is the uh, Gavix Aquadiver, or Avidiver, excuse me, uh, review, and they did a full review on this new Gavix watch. You can see it right here. Uh, one of the things the review says is that it is very hard to combine two elements from two different styles of watches we've seen uh, diving dress watches that don't really work very well. Um, and this watch is the combination of two different types of watches. It's the combination of a diving watch and the combination of an aviation watch, which is how it got its name, uh, AV Diver or Ava Diver. Um, and so you can see it right here on my screen. And you can see it has this uh, inner bezel that uh, goes from uh, 60 all the way, or zero to 60 all the way around in five minute increments. And this is a feature that I actually really, really like uh, on my diver that I'm wearing here. Uh, I think the little mar uh, minute marker indicators make it really, really easy to read the time, especially when you're looking at the minutes. So you can see here, on this picture, it is 10, 10, or 10, 11, and uh, 34 seconds here. So yes, it is, it is very, very legible. And uh, so let me talk about how they kind of combine the elements of the aviation and the diving watches. You can see the three, six, and nine uh, Arabic numerals here, which is very iconic for aviation pieces. And it also has the kind of sword style cockpit looking hands. And then one really, really cool thing that you get on the black version is that you actually can't really tell where the second hand is until you look at the very, very tip of it. And it's orange and it stands out and it really pops on the dial. Uh, it's something that kind of reminds me almost of uh, uh, speedometers on cars. So that's something that's really cool. And then the diving component to this watch, you actually have an inner ring here, and you might think, oh, well, this whole inner bezel rotates. You're actually wrong. The, uh, the orange pip rotates, and you can see that in the pictures down here. So you can see that the, the five minute indicator bezel actually doesn't move and the orange uh, pip moves. And what this does is it allows for a diving countdown uh, without kind of mucking up the legibility of the dial. And that's something that I actually really, really like. Uh, the thing about this watch is that it has a Miyota movement, which I'm sure, you know, people are gonna hate on it for having the Miyota movement. But it is a very affordable price. I think it's only 700, it's around $700. Uh, without the VAT tax. So that's something that's really, really cool and something that uh, makes the watch kind of uh, a good value. And I know it does have the Miata movement, or Miota, however you pronounce that. Uh, it, it has the Miota 9015. Um, but you are getting a, a pretty good deal for your package. Uh, and then also something that I kind of missed here, you can see the, the picture here, the loom on this thing is really, really bright, and actually the orange triangle that you can, you can move around the bezel uh, lights up, so that's pretty cool. Here is a picture of the movement. Yeah, really interesting piece. I think it's really well decorated, and honestly, I can't really decide between the white version or the black version. So uh, let me know what you think. What would you get, the black or the white dial version? Uh, let me know in the comments section down below. If there's anything I learned from my last video, it is to not use all right over and over and over again when switching video topics. So 
Let us get right on into the second topic. This article comes from Hodinkee. You can check all of these articles in the description down below. I'll have links. Uh, and this one says, uh, it, it's an in-depth review. The IWC Automatic Aquatimer 2000 meters and what would happen if you wore it that deep? <laughs> it's not quite what you think. Um, well, the title says it's not quite what you think, but actually you would die. And uh, that's kind of what I expected. And they have a, a very long, drawn out way of saying how you would die. Uh, but basically, you would die. Uh, <laughs> the limits of a human dive is about 700 meters. So if, if you took it to 2,000 meters, obviously um, you would die. And the article is not so much focused on the watch as kind of the limitations that the human body has as it goes further and further down into the ocean. So it is quite an interesting read, and I'm not going to spoil all of it for you here, um, but they do kind of highlight, they say, OK, yeah, we haven't talked about this watch a whole lot, but you do have to um, you do have to admit that it is really cool that the watch can go twice as deep as uh, you will ever go on your dive. So that is, that is pretty cool. Here you can see a, a picture of the watch. I really like the black and yellow. And this actually also has a cool bezel, uh, which is why it was included. If it didn't have a cool bezel, I wouldn't have thought it was cool enough to include in this video. Uh, you can rotate this metal gear on the outside, and it actually spins the uh, inner bezel appropriately. So, uh, y you know, you don't have to unscrew a crown like you did on the last watch to move the bezel. You can move the bezel right uh, in your dive. Obviously, it's a unidirectional bezel because it's a diving watch. And one thing that this picture doesn't really show that the next picture does excuse me, not the next picture, this picture. You can see this striped dial design. It kind of looks like the, uh, a similar Omega. And I don't know, I, I think the combination of the black and yellow and the striped dial, I, you know, and of course the utility of having a watch that is rated to go 2,000 meters down is really, really cool. Uh, but obviously it is an IWC, so it'll be super expensive. So that pretty much wraps it up for this article. Let us move on to the next topic. All right, as I said in the beginning of this video, it, it was kind of a slow week for the watch industry. There isn't a whole lot of news. So I included another fun article from Hadinki. Uh, this is watch spotting, basically trying to find what athletes wore at the 2016 Olympic Rio Games. Here we have Rafael Nadal. Hopefully I said that correctly, but we all know my, pronunci my pronunciation, excuse me, is horrible. Point made right there. Uh, so he's playing tennis and he wore a Richard Mille 27-02 tourbillon. Here it is. You can see a picture right here. Boom. Pretty cool watch. Pretty cool watch. Uh, Michael Phelps is wearing an Omega uh, Seamaster Planet Ocean 600 uh, meter master chronometer chronograph. Wow, that is quite the uh, quite the mouthful. So I, I think I love this watch personally. Uh, let me get a picture for you here. I freaking love this watch. Boom. I am not usually a fan of uh, rose gold, but damn, this is a nice picture. And it is the uh, two register chronograph, which is pretty dang cool. All right, so moving on, we have Usain Bolt uh, sprinting. He's wearing a Hub uh, Hublot. We can see it right here if it loads. Yeah, here's a picture of him wearing it. Here it is. And man, these Olympic athletes are getting some pretty cool watches. I think I should become an Olympic athlete. Anyway, moving on, uh, we have Bubba Watson. Uh, if you know who that is, props to you. I, I don't know who that is. Uh, he's playing golf. He's also wearing a Richard Millet, but this is the RM055. 
You can see it right here again if it loads. I don't know why they link to Hublot's site, and I don't know why Hublot's site takes forever to load, but uh, here it is. Yeah, I'm, you know, I am not too impressed with these watches. I'm not a big fan of skeleton watches. If you're a longtime fan of this channel, you'll know that. And then, of course, let us move on to volleyball, which is, you know, if, if you're a guy and you're watching volleyball, um, we all know, we all know why, why you're watching. Uh, you're, you're, not, you're not checking out the watches. You're, you're checking out uh, the lack of clothing on the women. Anyway, <laughs> believe it or not, we have the, uh, the Carrie Walsh Jennings uh, playing beach volleyball, and she's actually wearing a pretty affordable G-Shock um, definitely not the Richard Millet. This G-Shock, uh, in the article, they suggested one that was very similar to it. This G-Shock is only about $100. So if you want to get something and say like, oh, well, you know, this was in the Olympics, uh, you might want to leave out what sport <laughs> it was in. Uh, but it was technically in the Olympics. And then uh, Ryan Laquette, uh, he's kind of made a fool of himself in the recent Olympic Games, uh, but he is, uh, he's a swimmer, and he was wearing an Apple Watch. So, kind of makes sense why he uh, made a fool of himself. Let us move on to our next article from Watch Time Magazine. This is about Christopher Ward, boom, 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 a company that I hold near and dear to my heart. Uh, they are paying tribute to British racing history with some new limited edition pieces. Uh, this, this first piece that you see here is only being uh, made 19, only 19 of them are being made. Wow, that is an English sentence. Why are you taking forever to load? Yeah, so here is the picture. That is pretty cool. I love the red second hand. I love um, this, uh, the highly legible um, hands and then the the zero to sixty uh, markers and then also this power reserve is pretty cool. It has a, something that kind of mirrors a, a fuel gauge, so that is pretty cool. I really love Christopher Ward. I think um, I think they're kind of an undervalued brand. They are um, British designed, but they are Swiss made, so that is pretty cool. Here is the back of it. And kind of the really cool thing about these watches is that they have a little piece of steel in them that are made from the British racing cars listed in the article. If you want more details, please go to the article. I'm, I'm just summarizing the news for you. I don't want to steal all of the pizzazz out of the articles. But here is the back of the watch. Uh, you can see it has the nice uh, green rotor pretty cool. This is almost 4,000 euro or $5,200. And if you're not ready to, uh, to spend that, oh my gosh, wait. I'm sorry, but they actually added uh, the little spring bar release things into the, into the straps. I love it when they do that. You don't have to own a, a special strap changing tool. Uh, very, very similar style. Here it is. Uh, it doesn't go from 0 to 60. It goes from 1 to 12, and the 12 is uh, kind of circled. I think I actually kind of like this design better. Um, it, it does look a little bit uh, cheaper, a little bit on the lower end, uh, but it still looks pretty amazing. So here's the front. Here's the back. I think I actually like the, the steering wheel on, on this piece a little bit better and uh, I like the green accent of the Christopher Ward. If you look at the car that this watch is modeled after, this, uh, this green kind of accenting on the rotor and the 12 uh, little pip at the, the 12 o'clock position, the 12 kind of circle, uh, really shows off uh, what the car was designed like. So that's pretty cool. That pretty much wraps up the news for the week. Uh, my name is Josh. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comment section down below. And I will see you all later.